Hello there, welcome back to episode 3 of my advanced tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. In the previous two episodes of this Let's Play series, we have set up shop. Up here we have our crafts district, our woodworker and smithing district, our stoneworkers district, and our kitchen and food making stuff district. Probably we're going to put the tailoring industry here as well. So up here we have now the, the entrance area. And uh, the starter base, which is becoming more and more obsolete. So we're today going to put up some defenses here in our entrance, because it's about time that we do so. We're going to reform this entrance area a little bit, because I'm actually not feeling too well about the situation as it is right now. And we're going to do, as a major topic of today, we're going to install the city the main city core today. So let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do here after we have uh, drilled a shaft through the aquifer here, we're going to go again one layer deeper before we actually do uh, build our city core. So we're going to go on over here and I'm going to dig a bit of a tunnel over here before I take another staircase down. Because I want to keep the elevation level 8 that we're sitting on right now as kind of a uh, transit nexus. So we're going to have something between the city and the rest of our operations. If ever there's something bad and evil coming from deep, deep below, this is a pretty good way to make sure it doesn't easily reach your civilians that can get really easily shocked by the smallest crundle. So in the long run, we're going to build a bridge here in between. So something like that, which can be then pulled up as a retractable wall to seal off the city court, but more about that later. Currently, it is early autumn. That means our outpost liaison will soon arrive. We sadly haven't struck a single gemstone. Usually, I do polish and sell some gemstones during the early caravan, but since that hasn't happened today, we are going to go on over to the Crafts Dwarf Workshop and we're going to make us some rock knickknacks. So we're going to make rock rings on two workshops. And with this command here, I'm setting up a one-time order. So we're doing two one-time orders of 10 rock rings each, which we're going to offer the trader that will come later. Maybe we will dig out some gemstones in between. I don't know yet. I am honestly not that optimistic, but who knows, maybe I'm wrong. So this is going to be the first layer of our city. So here we are going to bring up housing, temples, taverns, dining halls, all the stuff which makes dwarves happy. So we're going to go and, well, let's dig into this direction, our first section of living rooms. So there are so many different ways of building rooms and apartments for your dwarves that, well, it comes down to your own preferences, how you want to put it. I'm going to go for a uh, two on two layout here that I personally like. I probably will do a couple of other um, layouts in the course of the series it is at the end of the day really your own business how you want to how you want to do that space in this game is most of the time nigh limitless therefore you don't need to be stingy with how you dig your apartments and the like because you know it's uh, you could give every dwarf here a huge apartment if you'd like to your fortress will just uh, grow larger accordingly to that. So I'm just uh, digging a few different concepts here so for you to take some inspirations from. Now then, this is the first step. We're going to go for some doors in there, but uh, let's see, do I have enough floor plates right now? So I'm a, I'm a really big fan of slapping floorings into my rooms because a room's quality is very, very, very strongly defined by its value. And a floored 
ground is just worth more money than the cavern ground. I mean, I think it comes pretty, uh, pretty much uh, off clearly. So I'm dropping down some siltstone blocks into every little one of these apartments before I furnish them, because it's a real bummer that you cannot furnish a room after there's furniture in it. I really, really hope that this gets changed at some point. Okay, so we're getting a visit from the merchant. So currently we don't even have a trader's depot, so we're going to start with a trade depot. Yeah, I'm going to put that just right here in front of the base. That's not a uh, good point to have your depot at in the long run, but for starters, it'll totally do. Also, we're going to make sure, well, construction inactive. Yeah, well, anyways, we can delay the trade a little bit alone due to the reason that I'm pretty sure that my craft stores haven't made the full order yet. So it is time for some hotkeys, my men. So, and, and women, of course. So first hotkey, you press H and then you get this hotkey menu. I want the entrance of my base here at f1 and we're going to go uh, to f2 with our food district we're going to go f3 with our smithing district because i know that i uh, navigate towards these quite often and we are going to put f4 on our citizen district so we got now a nice uh, hotkey navigation system so the meeting zone will go now downstairs so we have made a different meeting zone. If you forgot where a meeting zone is at, places gives you gives you the area. So here, meeting area, it's still, oh, that was one that I uh, put up uh, while experimenting, preparing the series. So as you see there, you can hop directly to the zones that you want to get rid of because I don't want to have the meeting zone here anymore. We're going to put the meeting zone somewhere else later, but one thing at a time. So it's time for diplomacy. Our dudes give us the opportunity to order things from them. One of the good things to order in the first year, in my opinion, is always an anvil, because you never know, unless you have found already iron, but you'll never know if you'll find actually iron, and anvils, as you see, can only be made out of iron or steel, so these are pretty good stuff to be ordered. Another really nice first year order, in my opinion, if it is available, is... Where are the stones? This menu needs a search function. <clears throat> this is really, really the most annoying part, so um, for whatever reason there is, the game doesn't give you a search bar for for this thing i really hope they'll add that soon here stone finally found it so i am looking here for two things lignite and bituminous coal the fun part about lignite and bituminous coal is they are relatively low weight ores they're really really low weight so you will not overburden the caravan because you know a caravan has only so and so much stuff it can bring and if you order too many heavy things, it'll overburden the caravan and they'll almost bring nothing except for the few things that you've ordered. That's just a, a summary of it. So right now, well, the construction of the trade depot doesn't uh, have a high priority because we have all those lower building thingies downstairs, but it is okay. We currently don't have too much to trade anyways, so I'm, I'm taking it chill. The first year trade is usually also not that terribly, terribly, terribly important. So next step that we're going to do, we're going to forge us some uh, some stuff to drink. So labor menu, a plant gatherer is configured. I'm going to unassign the, the expedition leader because on the migrant side, we obviously got ourselves a adequate herbalist. Perfect, that's just the guy for the job. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a generous work order all over the place here. And uh, well, Dwarf Fortress has way too many different plants. So don't even try to uh, gather it all up uh, in detail if you don't want to spend a pretty cool long time studying it. It's okay to just uh, pick up everything. I've configured my still in a way that it'll process 
the stuff that can be processed into drink and the rest will fall to the kitchen. You don't need to understand much about it to make it work. Okay, so I somehow feel as if we're just not getting things done in time. Well, such is life. If that ever happens to you in the early phase of the game when your population is darn low, my personal favorite trick is to assign only one hauler to the duty, because that will leave everybody open for those construction jobs. Because currently no, no haul, uh, constructions are being done because everybody is busy hauling. When you dig out your first really huge part of your fortress, there's stuff to haul everywhere. All these boulders, they want to haul all these boulders up to this place. As you see there, there's always blank spots because our crafters are picking up stuff and hauling boulders is a very, very lengthy thing. So let's hope that uh, they'll get that done at some point in the near future. It would be a tragic thing to lose that. So, well, Let's be a little bit stingy about that. So, as you see, you can also suspend the constructions. It is a bit of a pesky task, but I want to make sure that nobody here is spending their time anymore on the construction that ain't important for me, because this thing should be now finally done. I want to sell those rings, and I want to see what I can get myself for the remaining year. So, there we go. Finally, they're starting to build that. Sadly, there is no other way I know of to prioritize buildings. So, we're also going to have to assign a broker. So, uh, as usual, the expedition leader is the best guy. Your expedition leader is a pretty good role at the beginning of the game, bringing a lot of good abilities for your fortress. So, we're moving now the stuff there. Usually you'll find your rings and the like in the finished goods bin. So we're going to move that over there and I hope the caravan isn't too annoyed of my um, of my long delays. Maybe they already uh, packed up and went home. It seems as if we took too long. All right, but this was a theoretical approach, obviously. Or wait a sec. Oh no, they're still lingering. Cool. So we're going to uh, request our broker now to this place. And now we're going to put this back to everybody does this and reassign the constructions while the caravan upstairs is unloading. You know, they, they need a moment to unload. Usually the first year caravan isn't that important because you start with practically everything you need, but it is still quite a nice uh, opportunity to, uh, well, Check out if you find something you really want to get your hands on. So shift scroll works here, a charm to get through the uh, through the list here in a uh, in a way that leaves you phys uh, mentally sane. So I'm bringing but be a, a barrel of dwarven beer. I'm bringing up extra picks. So for example, this is a good buy in the first year because we don't have any metal to process yet. But uh, more picks, more miners. So that's something I do like to pick up here. Pun not even intended. So let's see. I also like to buy me a bin of leather. And uh, well, a bin of cloth that's not terribly overpriced would be also cool. But well, not that necessary. We, we got what we need. And you could now buy some leaves and fruit. I do this because, you know, there's one thing in this game that uh, does make your uh, dwarves happy, and that's um, ooze variety, you know? They they really like to drink different stuff from time to time. So let's see how far our rings will get us here in our trade. Whoopsie. Well, I don't want to sell the mugs if I don't have to. So... Uh... Well, it looks like we have to because our production wasn't nearly as uh, effective as I'd wanted to. So we're, we're going to sell our mugs away. Who cares? We can make as many of, uh, of them as we want. There we go. So the trader is still at a loss. That means I'm going to um, cross out the leather bin and we do that trade. The picks were the most important thing to pick up in that, uh, that thing here. And... 
we have gotten ourselves some more migrants. Wonderful. So here I want to um, make the, the stockpile zone a little bit smaller. So I click in there, get on the paintbrush and get on the eraser. So here, because you cannot build on stockpile zones. So I'm going to put a lid on this uh, thing here because I don't want any invader getting the ability to stroll in here because we're placing down some traps now. We're going to use the most primitive form of trap. That's the stonefall trap. We're going to put up a few of these here. Oh, no access to mechanisms. Oh, I forgot to make mechanisms. So let's change that. We put up a new work order for rock mechanisms. Here we go. So I don't care what kind of rock it is. I just want to make sure that we always have plenty of these. And yes, I keep the 10, 10 per order running because, you know, in a Dwarven society, it is really hard to have too many picks, uh, too many mechanisms. Alrighty, so let's get back to our city and set up some beds. So in this regard, I'm going to use the function use closest material because, you know, there is no real reason not to. So come on, finish one piece of floor. That one, please, guys. I want to place down the bed. And when I'm done with my task... Oh, whoopsie. I don't even have one more bed. And when you're done, or when I'm done with that, I set it back to this one because it's... Uh, use closest materials can be sometimes quite obnoxious. You'll see what I mean in the course of the series. <laughs> when I start fumbling. So we're totally out of wood. Let's change that. We got plenty of trees in the in front of our base, and uh, we got 25 people at our disposal. Let's use them. That wood will be processed into new beds, and that's just what we need. Overall, I discovered that this place isn't too rich. There is, there has been no gemstones so far, except for some in the uh, Aquiferous Stone, and no ores. So. We're out for a pretty challenging embark, but that's what I uh, wanted to put up here. This world has a very low mineral density. I did this on purpose to give this series more, um, more quality, you know, in terms of teaching you something about living with, under harsher con conditions and improvising a little bit. If everything goes according to plan, this biome doesn't have iron even. We have copper and tin available though, according to my geologist. So we're going to have a good time in this regard. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm smoothing out the, the uh, front um, thingies here, this is to make sure that the doors connect nicely with the rest of the flooring. Otherwise, it'll be ruddy, like you see here. There's a little bit of a... Uh, here, now the, now the border is sharp, and if you don't, it's a little bit muddy. And, uh, I don't like that. So, now, let's put up the next pieces of flooring here. Here I use a little bit of a trick. Pause it for a moment so nobody does finish the parts I don't want. So here, you see, I'm just doing both rooms at once. And these are the um, discount um, apartments, you know. They only have three grids and they look quite uh, crappy, don't they? But they are super efficient. So go on to the mining orders thing and the and the X thing, and then you can cancel out the ones that you don't need. So here we go. We have our first 10 bedrooms. So let's assign them. Bedroom, multi, just drag and drop a rectangle. Boom, nine rooms created at once. This one just requires still a bed, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna get there. So I'm pretty happy about the fact that we got to work with 25 dwarves. It's it's always random how many people you get on your first two migration waves. I've already had it that the first migration wave was just one person. So we're, we got off lucky now, because now it'll take roughly well, one and a half or two years until the next migrants arrive. This is basically the time that the game gives you to build up your fortress before it'll smack you with more dangerous things. Because, as a matter of fact, you'll not get attacked for your fortress population is above 50. 50 is the threshold mark for the bigger things to attack you. So, speaking about attacks, let's set up traps. So. 
I want to have some stonefall traps here protecting me. We still have no mechanisms? Shame on you guys. So we also will build up a wall here in front of that thing because this was just a probing tunnel and it, uh, it, it, it displeases me to have no wall in front of it. Don't ask. It's not that important. So the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to dismantle all the workshops up here because they are inefficient. The people working here are taking much longer ways travel-wise than they'd actually need. So let's change that. We're going to dismantle all that and make sure that they're going to work here where we have stockpile zones allocated for all these workshops. They're all nice and close together. The farms are just around the corner. This whole system will make them work much more because they won't be wasting that much time running around picking up stuff. So we have now finally mechanisms. And another thing that I want to put on the work order tab first is here at the carpenters. I want to order cages, wooden cages, 10 of them. Is that enough? Well, four starters it should be. Alrighty, so we got enough wood to work with and we're going to put a door in front of that because you know, it doesn't need to be like that. And the dormitory here, well, for, for now, I'll leave it like that. Let's get back to the city, see how much progression has been made. We have now here 20 apartments available. That is not enough for the entire city. So we're going to chuck out another area here and proceed with building apartment blocks. This will be something you got to do a lot in this game, and I personally find it a good activity if I just wait for stuff to get done. I like to dig out a new apartment block. Maybe this uh, habit can, clo can, can grow close to you as well. So this will be all we need for now. So let's set up some other goodness for our folks. So here, dining hall, here, tavern so they'll have the places to be at as close as possible and good news we finally found fire agates our first gemstones have popped up that means that this layer isn't completely devoid of any gemstone i'm relieved after digging out already such a great uh, such a large area of this uh of this part of the mountain i grew weary so since we've bought ourselves a couple of extra picks. Oh, a fourth miner has come with the migrants. That also happens from time to time. I want to assign at least one person. Let's uh, go for the trapper. We have now three woodcutters. Wow, that's way more than we actually need. So four woodcutters. Okay, it's a lumberjack party. You know, when they come with that job to your uh, to your fortress, they keep that job. So let's let's cut that down to two. It's it's totally okay. Two woodcutters are still way more than I need. Usually I leave that uh, at one person, but uh, you know, since we already seem to have that many, okay then. Okay, let's go and set up another bed. And our next goal is going to be to staff out these rooms completely and make sure that everybody here gets a uh, gets a bed to sleep in. This will increase the overall moral of your fortress by a lot. If your dwarves already have access to regular drink and food and to a room where they can lie down, which isn't a complete mess, you already have a good solid foundation for the happiness of your dwarves. I personally like to pull the power card of housing as soon as possible because it is a very easy way to stabilize your fortress. You can do, of course, much more shenanigans than I did here. A lot of, uh, a lot of people love to install mist generators. I mean, actually, actually, we could still install a mist generator. We do have, we do have the room. Yeah, maybe I'll do this here because it's a pretty cool thing that a lot of people love. And uh, speaking about a lot of people love, I I am confused. This is odd. This is truly, truly odd that I have single pillars of that. Usually, this is literally the first time that I'm seeing this. 
Um, usually the Aquiferous Rock is, uh, you know, as you see it here, a, a solid mass. I've never had it that two pillars stand separated like that. But oh my, it is as it is. So our biome has a lot of little Aquiferous Pockets as it seems. This really differs from biome to biome. I've had maps with light aquifer where you had to breach one aquifer layer and that's all you ever heard of that dude for the rest of the run. So it is really different for each time you, you put up your game. Here, well, we're going to use this to add character into the tavern. You know, we're going to smooth and engrave these pillars, make it to part of the room's aesthetics. No problem, it's just gonna be like that. All right, so we're getting closer to the 20 beds mark, and uh, we're going to go and staff out these. Just waiting for the last pieces of floor to get placed down. Here we go. So next step, we repeat that over here. Oh, whoopsie. So this is the way why I usually switch back from uh, from closest material to that because you know here well I really wish one day there will be a function that allows us to use a same material over and over again in one way or another it would be so helpful if I could tell the game to please use every time siltstone blocks but it just isn't possible. That's also the only reason why I don't put floor into the doorsteps here. But the process of doing so is mind-numbing, you know? You need to designate a single tile with siltstone blocks each and every time. It hurts my brain so much that I stop doing it and just smooth the floor in front of the, in front of the room and put a door on top of it. Because, you know... Optically, it's it's just looking the same, and it saves me so much time and uh, and and brain power and uh, clicking pain. And you already have enough when you play Dwarf Fortress. All right, so let's make a nice looking area out of that here as well. So our dining hall. The thing is, I don't have enough floor um, blocks for that. So we're going to go and make us some rock blocks out of a different material here. Let's use the rock salt that we got as well, you know. So we don't have the same looking floors everywhere. Okay, so it'll take a bit of a moment for us to finish these rooms because, you know, I don't want to have the pain to put the furniture in and then decide to f to floor the room later and put the furniture out again, floor it and put the furniture back in again. It's a horribly uh, painstaking process, therefore. I'm rather waiting for my first dining hall a little bit because it is a quality of life thing for your, for, for your dwarves, you know, here, dining hall. That's going to be a place where your dudes will eat then. So we're already getting pretty close to the end of this episode. We're going to go in the next episode exactly into the opposite direction. Let's uh, set up that uh, tunnel already. Because this tunnel here will lead now to our mining area. Because I want to be covering as much ground as possible, we're going to make two arms. Let's see, maybe Aquiferous Rock will nope us out on some of our plans again. So this will be mining. I do this as far away as possible from our citizen core, but still somewhat connected. So the miners don't have an insanely long way to go for their work, but still not don't endanger their uh, the citizens if ever something unhappy should hatch out of the mines. Okay, so here we go. 20 bedrooms made more to come. So this is my personal standard procedure for my fortresses. I don't know how you guys have it, but I personally like to have the, the housing down ASAP because, you know, you live with this amount of dwarves for a pretty long time and I made the experience that the happiness of my dwarves was nightly unkillable with this basic setup of dining hall, tavern, and a few basically um, low quality rooms like this works a charm for me every time let me know in the comment section how you guys uh, prefer to do it because 
it is with all the sandbox games just the same you know there are so many ways to do the same with a similar or better or sameish outcome you know there's just so much you can do so we're smoothing out the walls of the entire apartment blocks here because smoothened walls increase the value of the apartments and we're all about apartment uh, we're all about an uh, increase of the value of our apartments so we're lacking a few doors but i'll leave it like that for the episode today next episode we're going to set up the dining hall and the tavern and go for some mining because i want to know what the mountain has in store for us so thanks again so much for watching i hope you find this helpful and entertaining i surely do i love making these so Comments go down below, questions or whatever you have on your mind, I'd love to hear from you guys. Also, let me know what kind of uh, future topics you might want to see in the series. A thumbs up on the series helps tremendously to make it visible for other people who might need the help of the series as well. And of course, consider subscribing, there's uh, it's the best way to support this channel basically doesn't cost you anything. If you want to stay notified, the bell thing does the trick for you. Playlist links are in the description box below, so if you want to start on out from the beginning of the series, or if this overwhelms you, I already have made a beginner's tutorial series where I explain everything from the bottom up. So, enough of the ad roll. I thanks, uh, I, I thanks, exactly. I lost my ability to talk, there I have it. I thank you so much for for watching until the bitter end. As usual, this means a terrible lot to me because you're watching ads made by me. Why are you doing this? <laughs> Anywho, have a nice day and see you on the next episode when we're going to breach deeper.